in the, they'll probably tell you a little bit more about it. They're the experts, I'm not. So um, maybe throughout the, the uh, time here, they'll give you a little bit more information about the instrument they play and the rest of the uh, string instruments in the family. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys play some. And I'm gonna tell you guys about some educational programs at the end that um, you might wanna look into for next year, okay? All right, so enjoy. This is, they're called Revamped, and um, they love to take music and rework it for the duo. So uh, it's really fun. There's a lot of really cool tricks they do, so I think you'll really love it. professional musicians, which is actually a really cool job. We get to go for our job, and we get to teach people how to play music, and we get to share our music with others through performance, so it's really, really neat. We met back before college and started playing together in college, and all the music that you're going to hear today is music that we've taken, uh, listened to, and then sort of figured out how we might make that music work on two violins. Raise your hand if you already play a musical instrument. 
Anybody already play? Ooh, great. Lots of musicians. Raise your hand if you would like to play a musical instrument. Oh, very good. So make sure you listen at the end. Um, Mrs. Edgers is going to talk about a really, really cool opportunity where you might get to learn how to play an instrument. That first piece of music we played for you was called The House of the Rising Sun. Our next piece of music is one that was actually written a long, long time ago by a man named Niccolo Paganini. He was a violinist and he wrote music too. And he really, really liked to show off. So he would write music that was really hard, really showy, and then people would sort of make up stories about him. How could he be so good at playing the violin? They weren't quite sure, so they would sort of make up stories of legends about him. Um, so what we did is we arranged this, which was written for one violin. We arranged it for two, and in the style of Paganini, we threw in a little trick of our own that you can watch for.
All right, we have a couple more pieces of music to play for you today. The next piece is called the Orange Blossom Special. It's an American film tune about a train. So if you're listening carefully, I bet you'll hear a lot of different sounds where we're pretending, even though we're violinists, we're actually pretending to be the sounds of a train. Oh, and as we're playing our next couple pieces, you can also be thinking if you have any questions about what it's like to be a professional musician and practicing, or if you have a question about the violin, we'll give you an opportunity in just a second here to ask some questions. you can use to make violins out of. Um, I believe maple is very common. Do you know what yours is made out of? We don't actually really know. There's lots and lots of different options. Um, usually a pretty soft wood because they have to carve out the back to make it sort of a, I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bit of a arc shape. 
at the bottom so that you have to carve it so that it can sound really nice. And the sound can the sound bounces around the inside of the violin, kind of like it bounces around the inside of the clarinet. And then the sound comes out these fancy little holes here in the front. Okay. Why is the string so big? Oh. Why is the like the why is the bow so long? Uh, the bow didn't used to be so long. Long, long time ago, like when that piece, that second piece we played, when that piece was written, the bow was actually much shorter. And then I think people wanted to get a more sustained sound. Mark would play what the old bow used to sort of sound like. And you can hear it's sort of the sound decays like when it, when you hit a piano key and the sound starts to fade away, does that. Then people like to have a more sustained sound when they started changing the music and it sounds more like this. So I think they made the bow longer to help us get that more sustained sound. Okay, how about a couple more? Ooh, great question. How long do we practice? We try to practice as much as we can, especially in college. We would try to do between two and four hours a day. And then even more than how much we practice every day, it's very important that we practice every day and get that consistency and that we're very smart about how we practice. So it's not just running through everything every day, but trying to fix very deliberate things. Being a violinist is a little bit like being a gymnast, but a gymnast of the fingers. And muscles, what we do is we're really training our muscles to know how to play. And muscles are really, really quick to forget things. So if I forget to practice my violin for a week, and then I pick it up again, I'm actually not even as good as I was a week ago. It's not like if you do a painting, and then you come back to it a week later, and everything that you painted is still sitting there on the paper. It actually is like coming back and having the paint get blurred and you painted a boat and now the boat's not there anymore. So you have to really make sure you practice that every day so that you don't give your fingers a chance to forget what they've already learned. Okay, let's have one more question. How can we play so fast? Ooh, how can we play so fast? Well, the short, easy answer is we practice a lot. But there's more to it than that. We also play very, very small motions. Just like if you were going to clap really fast, would you clap like this? No, that would be really slow, wouldn't it? You would do really tiny, tiny little motions. So we move our bow just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit and keep our fingers really close to the string and that helps us play fast too. All right, great questions today. I think you win the excellent questions award from the schools we've been to so far. So we have one more piece of music to play for you today. It's called Chardash, which is a Hungarian dance. And oddly enough, it was actually, this piece was written by an Italian composer, Vittorio Monti. Um, and this is one that we like to have a lot of fun with. So we might get a little goofy in the middle and you might hear other tunes that don't really seem to fit and they might be from something else. So you can listen and see if you recognize any other music that we like to sort of stick in the middle of this one.
want to thank you guys so much for having us. I want to take a minute here to tell you a little bit about our education programs. But before I do that, can we give them one more round of applause? It has really been a fun week for me because uh, I rarely get the chance to actually spend time with the musicians in the symphony. Um, and it's great to get to know them, and it makes it so much easier to do my job because you realize what you're really out there fighting for. So I want to do a couple of things. I want to share with you some really amazing education programs we have coming up that would be available to start next year. And I'm going to tell you guys, but I'm also telling the teachers, and we'll make sure that uh, everyone gets information that we can get to the parents because uh, one of the programs, which I'm especially excited about is the opportunity for uh, students that do not play an instrument yet but are interested. Uh, it's a first come first serve basis so if you, if you think you want to be part of the program, um, you want to tell your parents right away and get your application in because the symphony is going to actually pay for six months of lessons for um, a number of students. So what that means is you can choose the instrument you want to try and we are going to pay the teacher for you to take lessons for six months. And um, that is actually due to a large grant we received for education. It was a $30,000 grant uh, that was from the T.D. Lauer and Jane Young Lauer Trust. And if you guys will do me a quick favor, um, we're recording a video of the performance today and I wanna make sure that their daughter, Jana, who helps run the trust, knows how much we appreciate their generosity. So can you guys just say a big thank you to Jana? Can you say thank you, Jana, really loud? One, two, three. Thank you, Jana! All right, thank you, guys. Uh, one other program that I want to tell you about is we're going to be hosting a little contest next year. Um, we're going to start taking... Um, I don't want to say applications, like videos and essays and letters to the symphony, because we're actually going to award somebody, one school in the region is going to get a full symphony performance. 
So we're actually going to bring the whole symphony to the school and perform a concert. And we're looking for teachers and the students to get involved in making like videos or writing letters to the symphony and saying why why should the symphony come to see you? Why what what do you want the symphony for? You know how excited you are about music. And I hope you guys will participate in that. And we're looking forward to bringing the symphony to the school. So it could be you. Um, but we still are going to continue to bring education to the schools next year, and we'll definitely come back here again as long as you want us back. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can maybe uh, continue this for years to come, and someday maybe you'll get to come back to your school and play as one of the professional musicians. Right, does anybody have any questions for me? No? That's all right. I understand. I'm not the exciting part of the show. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for having us, and we look forward to your entries for the contest, and uh, hopefully I'll see some of you guys picking up instruments and learning how to play. Have a good day.